Hi everyone and welcome back to another guide. Today I'll be giving you an updated PS Vita Slim 2000 model jailbreak video and making it easy and simple. Essentially this guide is intended to jailbreak your console to unlock its full potential and bring life to it. The steps used in this video were provided by the following website with full details and facts. If you have any questions please comment down below or check out the webpage to troubleshoot some problems you may come across. For the jailbreaking method, we will be using the Henlo method. The Henlo exploit chain for the PS Vita allows for the installation of homebrew applications to the live area screen. It is compatible with the firmware versions of 3.65 to 3.74. Note that the Henlo chain is not persistent, meaning it does not remain installed after a reboot. Fortunately, this is only a temporary restriction until Hinkaku Enzo is installed. In addition to running Henlo, we will also enable access to Unsafe Homebrew, which gives extended permissions to homebrew applications. The Vita Deploy application will also be installed to your home screen, and Vita Deploy makes installing apps, plugins, and custom firmwares simple and includes many useful tools and utilities. Please ensure that you have some time set aside to do this jailbreak. Every jailbreak has a potential to severely damage your console, so you have done the following. Number one, fully charge your device. Two, set aside 10 to 20 minutes of your time to focus on your console and avoid distractions. Three, do not let your console sleep during the jailbreak process as this can cause serious damage to your console. Four, make sure you have an SD card and SD card adapter. If you do not, I will provide affiliate links down below to recommended sources. I recommend an SD card of 256 gigabytes minimum, either Samsung or SanDisk, but I recommend getting the 512 gigabyte card because it's just the sweet spot when it comes to a PS Vita. And finally, you will need internet connection on your PS Vita. So let's begin by launching Henlo. First thing we want to do is go to the web browser and go to the following URL on your device. On the Henlo page, press Unlock My Vita, then press Unlock. If the exploit was successful, you should be greeted by a screen titled Henlo Bootstrap. Next, we're going to be installing Hinkaku and Vita Deploy. First, press X on Install Hinkaku to enable Homebrew. When that's finished, press X on Install Vita Deploy. When that's finished, press X on Exit. Now we're going to configure Hinkaku, launch the Settings application, navigate to the Hinkaku Settings, check the Enable Unsafe Homebrew, return to Hinkaku Settings menu, and close the Settings application. Next, we're going to be installing Enzo, which is a complete custom firmware solution for the PS Vita. It allows for convenient homebrew access on your device by running an exploit at boot time to set up the Hinkaku homebrew environment. It is more convenient than Hinkaku as it does not require you to trigger an exploit on your device after every reboot manually. So we'll be using Vita Deploy to install both Hinkaku Enzo and the firmware version of 3.65. And just note that this mod will make permanent modifications to your device. If anything goes wrong, there is no recovery. While the tool has worked successfully for many users, you take sole responsibility in what happens to your device. Let's move on, open the Vita Deploy application. Then go to install a different OS. Tap quick 3.65 install and wait for the components to download. It's extremely important to not let the Vita go into sleep mode during this process. If it does go to sleep and is stuck on a black screen, hold the power button until the console turns off and redo this part. Once greeted with the confirmation, press X to confirm. 
Then read the notice given on the screen and wait 20 seconds. Another confirmation will appear. Press X again to confirm. Your device will now install firmware version 3.65 alongside with Hinkaku Enzo. Once finished, it will reboot into custom firmware mode. Your console is now running custom firmware 3.65 Hinkaku Enzo. So let's move on to finalizing your console so that way you can get going on to running some homebrews and installing some amazing apps. Launch the Vita Deploy application, then go under the app downloader. You want to select the following applications, the ITLS installer and the YAMT app. The YAMT app is going to help us install and set up our SD card so that way we have the space of 512 gigabytes on this particular Vita or if you're working on some other SD card, this is going to make it very simple to install that SD card and have that massive expansion of storage on your PS Vita. So wait for the app to finish downloading and installing the applications. When it's finished, you can exit Vita Deploy by using the PS button. Next, open up the ITLS Enzo application and press X on install the full ITLS package. Wait for your device to reboot and you'll be all done. Let's move on to blocking updates. We're going to launch the settings application. You want to uncheck the download update file for system software. Now to have PlayStation Network access, navigate to the Hinkaku settings and check enable PSN spoofing and check enable version spoofing. Go to spoofed version and enter in the box 3.74. Should a new firmware version be released in the future, you must change the spoof version to the match in order to access PSN. Now we're going to install the ST2 Vita adapter on your console. YAMT, which is called Yet Another Mount Tool, is a multi-purpose kernel plugin for the PS Vita, which allows for the use of a micro SD card as a storage device via an SD2 Vita adapter. The SD2 Vita is a micro SD to game card adapter, which is inserted into the game card slot in your device. By using the YAMT kernel plugin, the USB drive or micro SD card you use will be mounted to the UXO folder just like you're using a Sony memory card. This is very useful because micro SD cards are significantly cheaper than Sony memory cards and they have higher capacities. YAMT is only compatible with the firmware versions of 3.60 and 3.65 Hinkaku Enzo. So make sure you have your SD card and your SD2 Vita adapter and insert it into your console. First thing we're going to do is format your SD card, launch the Vita deploy application, Press X on miscellaneous, then press X on format storage device. Ensure that the target is set to SD2 Vita and file system is set to text fat. Press X on format target storage. If this fails, ensure that the adapter is inserted properly and is undamaged. Then reboot and try again. You can close out of Vita deploy and you can open your settings application. Navigate under devices and you should now see a new option called storage devices. Next, enable use YAMT to enable the YAMT driver and set the UXO to default and UMAO to SD2 Vita. Hold down the power button and select power off. Power on your device to reboot. Next, open up your Vita deploy and go to the file manager. Navigate to the UXO folder partition, then press down on the D-pad to highlight a folder or file. Press triangle to bring up the menu. Press X on mark all. Press triangle again to bring up the menu and press X on copy. And navigate out of the UXO partition and enter the UMAO folder partition. Press triangle to bring up the menu and press X on paste and wait for it to finish. Once done, you can exit Vita Shell and open the settings application. Navigate to Devices, then Storage Devices, 
set UXO to SD2 Vita and set UMAO to internal storage. Hold down the power button and select power off. You can power on your device to reboot. And you have now successfully jailbroken your device and installed an SD2 Vita adapter with the storage of your micro SD card now being the main storage of your console. Once you have rebooted into your PS Vita, you should now see a new storage capacity under your system settings. And that is going to be your SD2 Vita adapter. Let's now move on to installing some essential applications on your console. Open up Vita Deploy, go to the app downloader, and we're going to select a few applications off of this list. The first application we're selecting is VitaShell. It's a standalone file manager, VitaDB, which is a homebrew store database. And we're going to also check Adrenaline, which is the PSP emulator custom firmware application. PKGJ, you can download and unpack package files directly on your Vita. And finally, we're going to select custom themes manager because who doesn't love to have custom themes on their console. Once you have selected those, just hit download the selected apps at the very top and just wait until all the applications have been installed. And once they have been, you can go back to your home screen and you will now see all these applications installed on your SD card. Let's first open up the Vita DB downloader because this app is so powerful that it's going to install a file that is needed for us to run a bunch of ports and run this application and all sorts of different homebrews. So once you run it, you will be greeted with a message saying that the runtime shader compiler is not installed. Vita DB downloader will proceed with its extraction, press OK, and it will do its magic to install this file. Once it's finished, you'll be inside the Vita DB application and you can see all the different homebrews, emulators, games you can download directly onto your console, just as long as you're connected to the network. First thing you want to do is update your Vita DB downloader. It's going to be marked as outdated, so make sure to press X and it will begin to update your application. Once that's finished, let's go back to the home screen and open up Adrenaline. And we want to press X to download the PSP 6.61 firmware. So the console will begin to download and you'll see the percentage there. And once it's finished, it's going to close the application. And you just want to get back into the app. You will now be greeted with a new message saying press X to install the 6.61 firmware. Press X to install and it should run the firmware and install it directly onto your console. Once it's finished, it will boot up into the app and show you the entire PSP interface. This is an amazing emulator to have running on your console to run all of your PS1 games and PSP games flawlessly. And that is it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to learn more about your PS Vita and all the different applications and games you can install on your console, please make sure to subscribe to this channel for more awesome guides like this. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.